project finance conclusion. So this is the final um, wrap up for this series. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I've tried to be as brief as I can. I've tried to give an introduction um, that's suitable for somebody that doesn't know anything about project finance and a nice refresher um, for skilled practitioners and perhaps people that are wanting to sort of onboard people, um, junior, um, junior members of staff or junior team members um, into the project finance world. Um, VC is often seen as a Beyonce um, asset class, the one that's exciting and sort of innovative and, uh, and artistic and creative. Um, and obviously it was VC that produced the apps that we all know and love, um, like Airbnb and Uber and Instagram and Facebook. And that's why it's associated with so much glamour, right? Um, but what we have learned in the past um, sort of few lectures is that project finance can be um, innovative too. We've looked at the history um, of project finance, um, which is extremely rich going back hundreds to thousands of years. And um, we've looked at the difference between project finance and corporate finance. We've looked at both international case studies and local case studies. Um, we've looked at public-private partnerships. We've looked at the legal terms and agreements in project finance. We've looked at risk. We've looked at financial modeling in project finance as well. We also met some interesting characters along the way. Zeus, the god, Hakim Bello Sage, the Nigerian entrepreneur, Funke Okweke, the female um, um, sponsor of the Main One project, um, Aladdin and Mickey Mouse from Disneyland, Matthew, the tax collector in the Bible, and even my husband, David Brown. Um, so we've, we've, met, um, we've met a lot of very interesting and diverse group of people, some cartoon characters. And we've also seen um, project finance stories from America, from France, from UK, um, with the NHS, um, France, with Euro Disney, America with the Loop Pipeline, Lesotho in Africa with their hospital, and lots of case studies from my home country, Nigeria, as well. Um, books to read. Um, I told you that I would um, give you all the uh, most interesting books to read, my recommendations. Um, this is um, the introduction to Structured Finance um, by Frank Fabosi. Um, this is one of my favorite books. Um, it has a great chapter on project finance and it also gives um, context to other structured um, finance transactions. So this is a great book. Um, there's also um, the book that I recommended for modeling um, and that's uh, project and um, corporate finance modeling. And this is by Edward Bodmer. Um, and again, very, very well read by me and um, you know, a very, very good reference um, in terms of project finance on the modeling side. The Godfather, um, E.R. Yescombe, um, his book, he has one book on project finance and another book on um, public-private partnerships. Get both of them, they're awesome. And, um, you know, probably my favorite book in the world on project finance, um, and it's called Project Financing, um, Asset-Based Financial Engineering by John Finity. He's actually quoted um, in, his only author that I actually quoted um, in the um, actual report, um, he's amazing. And if you want to dig deep into the Eurostar case, if you want to dig deep into the Euro Disney case, and both of these, um, both of these cases are actually really well treated in this book in so much detail. And if you're going to get one book, then I'd recommend this one. Um, and all of them are available. You can get them from Jeff Bezos will hook you up with all of these books and some of the other books that I've mentioned here, like the um, case book um, by Benjamin St. If you want a lot of a lot more cases and you enjoyed the cases that we went through today in sort of a more superficial way than they're treated in the textbooks. I'll conclude um, with talking about impact. Um, it, impact is something that I'm very passionate about. Impact um, here in Nigeria, impact across the African continent. Um, and I hope I've managed to convince everybody watching that um, capital deployed in the right way can become a transformative catalyst for growth and development, particularly in emerging markets like Nigeria. Thank you. <laughs>